So, like I said, electrical and technology is a good thing. But wow, when you, you go, a storm goes through there and you lose all your electricity and, uh, and stuff like that. And then everything's pitch black, especially the street lights. The, you have no street lights and it's pitch black. That's an eerie, eerie place to be. It's an eerie feeling and an eerie place to be, in other words. So they're experiencing that in Houston right now. All right, and the next thing we want to do is just go ahead and come over here and let's just come across here and make a, like a little, um, that's, that's coming off a little bit more like right in here. Okay. And then we take we cut this just like this and then we come in here this will round off that way we can round off the face even a little bit more we're not going to put a face on her we're just going to leave it uh, bare There we go, just like that. So that way we can kind of come in here and and make the face a little bit more what we would call movable or, or symmetrical as we say. See that like that? There we go. And but uh, it's it's sad. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of people hurting folks. It's just those of you who have been through it know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's just, but if you've never been through a storm, if you've never been without power, and and especially if you're living in an apartment now, in my home I can get my I can get a generator out, or a lot of people will have to end up leaving their home and going somewhere else just in order to get air conditioning. Now I know that. A lot of people say, well, you're just, you know, you need to stop all this air conditioning stuff. The problem is, in a lot of those situations, and this is what we, now, when we're outside and, and we don't have air conditioning sometimes, now, I know the heat gets very, very the humid and heat, heat down here in Texas, but more than that, for those old people, they, they just can't go nowhere. So they're stuck in this place, and to me, it ought to be mandatory in a nursing home or whatever they should they should force them to have generators but they don't you know some kind of backup generator for the people but they don't do it so these people are left without uh, any help any means okay I'm just trying to bring this up in here and this this is very very bad on these old people and this is what is going on. And you can, I guess you could blame it on energy, that maybe they're not prepared or whatever. But, but I also know, see, people, I worked in industry long enough that I know how long it takes a lot of times to do things things do not always a day does not solve problems okay uh, we think everything should be you know that people keep talking about over in Houston they've got bucket trucks that they look and they see um, uh, are sitting there and they're not doing anything and they should be over there the the issue is I worked in industry long enough to understand that safety is the number one goal, especially when you're working electricity. And it's not that these people are just sitting around not wanting to do, not doing anything. They're sitting around waiting for their, their work to be, the work order and everything like that. They can't just come in and people say, oh, I see them driving around and they're not doing anything and stuff like that. Well, that, there are possibilities of that. But 
what I am saying is this. Um, when, when you have a job to do, there's a work order that has to be uh, given before you can do that job. That's why a lot of these guys at these uh, stations are not, are not working uh, as well. And so what you run into is um, what you run into is you have to produce a work order. And that work order tells the worker what to do, what they have to do, and is these and is it safe for them to work on it? Now even if they, they're the ones that's safer to whatever, you have to make sure, especially with electricity, and anyone that was an electrician or a lineman or anything knows that 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 all has to make sure that it's ready for the people to work on it or you're going to get somebody electrocuted and killed that's all there is to it so a lot of times at those staging areas where those guys are waiting for work orders and stuff like that people complain oh well they're not working they're not doing they're just sitting around uh, yes a lot of them are sitting around waiting to get their orders to go and do something a lot of these people are from out of town and I know it's frustrating. I'm not, I'm not saying that energy is competent. I'm not saying that, well, we've got energy down here, whoever your power company is. But what I am saying is I understand, I'm gonna get up underneath here a little bit more. I understand how the process works. And the process is very simple. You, you have a work order to, that you give to the person who's going to go, go do the job. That work order says that that piece of equipment is safe and that you can work on it. And, and the people that work on it are not always the people that safe them. Okay, folks? They're not. They're not always the people that safe them. Not at our plant. Uh, the maintenance would safe a piece of equipment for us to work on. It was maintenance who was safing it out no, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was us that would, operators that would safe out the piece of equipment for the maintenance. I, I, I'm getting all mixed up here. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay, now we're going to come down here and we're going to make a little thing right here and a little thing just kind of like right here. And so it has to be safe so that no one is hurt. In fact, it must be safe that no one is hurt because that's OSHA regulations. All that stuff is done on regulations. And before a person can work on it, it must be checked. It must be safe. What the public doesn't understand a lot of times is they think, well, these guys driving around here, you can simply walk up there and say, hey, I don't have electricity. Uh, that, that, uh, over here and you need to come over and fix this real quick that doesn't work that way folks because number one you don't know if it's safe and number two it has to be safe and number three if it's not on the schedule that that is the piece of equipment they won't work on right that moment because a lot of times when it comes to electricity now I'm gonna come here on the hands, I'm just going to kind of go up like this. See what I'm doing? Drawing these little where, where the hand's supposed to be. And I'm going to cut that right there, and then I'm going to come with my knife and just sort of dig that out right in there, okay? There we go. Just like that. It's got it gives it a little see that? Just gives it a little where the, the, the arms are. So that piece of equipment, you just can't work, go, you know, because someone tells you, oh, you need to work on this, they're going to. Now, yeah, I admit that they probably should have some more people and all that other stuff, but, but uh, I, don't, I don't exactly know how they, they deal. They could, but, but everything has to meet the requirements before those men can go and work on that thing safely. 
And sometimes they safe it out. You know, I'm sure a lot of them do. But once again, um, that all has to be um, made sure that it's safe. And that's what, that's what the public doesn't understand. They think that it's just, well, you know, I call them. Look, we don't have any electricity over here. And, and that's it. But you, you, you think about it now. 2.4 million people out of electricity. And let's let me tell you something. These line, linemen guys that do this electrical and travel, those guys, man, they make good money. They do. While those things are going on, they make real, real good money. And they usually, they usually work in double shifts. But... Uh, a lot of times they'll have to, when it comes to electrical, something is really damaged, like a grid. They have to just repair it or connect it in with something else and uh, uh, then later on come back and, 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 and really do the job. So that happens a lot too. It just depends on how much damage has been done. And not only that, but then when you have hurricanes, Trees go across roads. They get they're, they're, they're thrown across roads, and uh, so you have to uh, get those trees uh, out of the way. You have to have crews to do that. So there's a number, a number of things. All right, it's shaping up here. Look at that. See, it's just the little hands coming back together. What we're going to do, right in the middle, we're just going to cut a little thing like that and, and, and just separate them just a little bit. And then I'm going to just come to a little... There, there we go. Where it looks like her hands are separated. Now let me come up here and cut a little bit of that off. There we go. Um, so I, I know a, a, enough about in the industrial work that that's all that has to be done. So you, you just, the public doesn't understand that. And, and maybe they're doing something, maybe energy didn't get enough workmen. You know, you don't know what they did. You know, I don't know the, their full thing. I know what I went through, you know. Did we always have enough people? No, not always. We tried to. It still took a long time, so so I understand that. Doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> We're so dependent upon air conditioning nowadays. And and don't give me the global warming stuff, okay? I know there's global warming and stuff, but don't give me that's why it's hotter and all that other stuff. That's that's not. It's hot in Texas, folks. Let me tell you something. It's hot in Arizona, folks. Let me tell you something. It's hot in those places. I mean, it's been hot for years in those places. We have, Our humidity is deadly down here. So, and that's why a lot of those older people, I feel sorry for them because they're stuck in places where they can't get the assistance of, of, uh, of I mean, they can't move. They're laying in their bed just sweltering heat and uh, so now a lot of a lot of I think Houston has one called cool areas where they actually have uh, areas that open up to the public where they can come and stay where, where they use they use air conditioning in it and everything like that so but you know when you got four, four or five million people in a city it's pretty rough okay well, this, this is, we're about to shape this little girl, this little woman, that way. Got a little hands and stuff. I'm not an expert, folks, when I talk about this stuff. But I, I do know industrial. I have worked in industrial for 40 years. And I do know about how, before you can work on something and stuff, by OSHA standards, everything must be safe the way OSHA standards and those things say and, and according to company policies and stuff like that so sometimes it's just not whatever we want so it isn't 
anyway I think that right there is perfect for uh, our little woman here I can take a little bit more off in the, in the um, in that area okay there all right let me go let me go and let me uh, wet this and we'll show you the little woman okay and this is a, a easy little form to do see how we just shaped it just basically shaped her out in other words and and we're not gonna have to do facial things but but we want to uh, get her face round almost like a little Mary of a manger scene but it's not really it's just a little um, a woman let's make sure that this is cut I, I need to get my little gouge and get in there sometime but I can do it with my all right let me go with her just a minute and we'll, uh, we'll look at her Bum, 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 bum. All right. Okay. Whoops, my did that. All right. There she is. I'll uh, clean her up a little bit. You can wet them and they clean them up pretty good. Stuff like that. Kind of get that all straight. And all that stuff and there is our little woman okay there's our little Danish woman right here and uh, she's not really kneeling she's actually standing is what she's doing just got our hands together I could have put a little pot in her hand or but we'll just save it for something simple like again like I said something very very simple all right well uh, next we'll carve the little man and uh, we'll go from there. Okay.